the rooster's defiant crow pierced the dusty window of a small adobe house nestled on the outskirts of San Miguel. Inside, Miguel, a man more comfortable in a hammock than a field, remained nestled in the land of dreams. Unlike most mornings, however, his slumber wasn't entirely peaceful. A nagging voice, one that suspiciously resembled his wife, Isabella, flitted through his subconscious. Isabella, a woman whose smile could rival the brilliance of a desert sunset, had been dropping hints like ripe mangoes for weeks. They were subtle at first, a raised eyebrow here, a pointed comment there, about the dwindling supply of tortillas and the increasing strain on their friendship with Carlos, the boisterous owner of the village Tienda. Miguel, however, was a master of procrastination. He'd perfected the art of the long, thoughtful yawn, the expertly timed sigh, and the ever-present excuse of manana, a word that, in his mind, translated to a magical land where work magically appeared finished and tortillas materialized on the table. Finally, at a near obscene hour approaching ten, Isabella, her patience wearing thin like an old rebozo, marched into the room. Sunlight streamed through the dusty window, illuminating the peaceful, and slightly embarrassing, sight of Miguel snoring softly, a single stray sandal dangling off the edge of the hammock. Miguel. Isabella's voice cut through the dreamy haze. It's past the hour of siesta. Today is market day, and there's nothing left in the house but a lonely chili pepper and a handful of empty promises. Miguel stirred, blinking at the sunlight with the innocent confusion of a newborn colt. Isabella, me amor, he drawled, his voice thick with sleep, must you be so harsh? Surely, Carlos, our good friend, will understand if we delay our visit to his tienda by just a tad. Isabella crossed her arms, her fiery brown eyes sparking with frustration. Carlos? Miguel, haven't you been listening to a word I say? We haven't been able to pay him for weeks. He's been more than generous, but even the most patient saint has a limit. Miguel stretched languidly, the hammock swaying gently. Isabella, don't worry your beautiful head about it, he said, his voice dripping with false confidence. God is good. He will provide. Isabella let out a frustrated groan. God's provisions, in her experience, usually came in the form of hard work and a bit of sweat on the brow. Miguel, bless his lazy heart, seemed to have a different interpretation. God may provide, she said, her voice firm, but he doesn't deliver warm tortillas or shiny pesos through the window. Now get up, Miguel. The market is waiting, and my patience has run its course. There was a steely glint in Isabella's eyes that Miguel couldn't ignore. With a resigned sigh, he lumbered out of the hammock, his bare feet slapping against the cool adobe floor. The promise of a delicious breakfast, Isabella wouldn't dare leave him hungry, spurred him on as he pulled on his worn but comfortable Guayabara shirt. The walk to the market was a familiar one, lined with brightly colored houses and the chatter of early risers. Miguel, however, couldn't shake the feeling of unease. Isabella's words echoed in his head, 
and the weight of his idleness settled on him like a heavy serape. As they entered the bustling marketplace, the aroma of roasting chiles and freshly baked bread filled the air. Isabella expertly navigated through the stalls, bartering for the best deals on fruits and vegetables. Miguel, meanwhile, felt like an outsider, a man adrift in a sea of purpose. Suddenly, a loud, booming voice broke through the market chatter. It belonged to Carlos, his face a comical mix of frustration and amusement. There you are, Miguel, my friend. Just when I thought you decided to join a traveling mariachi band. Miguel plastered a sheepish grin on his face. Buenos dias, Carlos, he mumbled. Just a little, indisposed this morning. Carlos, ever the pragmatist, cut through the pleasantries. Isabella, mi amiga, he addressed Isabella directly, your husband seems to be struggling with a minor, indisposition. Perhaps he needs some fresh air to clear his head? I have a few tasks around the tienda that require a strong back and a willing spirit. Miguel's stomach lurched. Carlos's tasks were legendary, known for their back-breaking nature and meager rewards. But seeing Isabella's hopeful glance, he knew there was no escape. Of course, Carlos, he muttered, forcing a smile. The rest of the morning was a blur of heavy crates and overflowing sacks of rice. Miguel, unaccustomed to such exertion, sweated profusely.